I'll kick us off. Uh, it's just the three of us for the first time in a while. We've had the best interviews, and that's been just really encouraging. Thanks to the people that have been going through. We have a lot of interviews coming up, uh, and we're wearing Chick-fil-A sauce, a.k.a. Compass Yellow, Launch Green, <laughs> and Rivian Blue. Uh, we didn't even coordinate it, but you guys are looking sharp. So we decided to come on here um, impromptu. We all have kind of written down various notes, but... RJ sent an email out on Saturday. We're recording on Monday evening after the kids are in bed, and we're just going to wing it here and talk about uh, what happened with that email and what sticks out. So that's my that's how I'm just going to set it up. Is like top takeaways, like bottom lines for you. The most important sentence, however you want to tee it up, is what I'm going for. Either one of you can kick us off here. All right. Well, I I know a couple of Jimmy's big things, or at least one of them came out of the email itself. Mm -hmm. But my biggest takeaways came out of the roundtable session. And I'm going to start with overall impressions and then dig down into a couple of specifics that were big for me. So overall impression, I was actually a little bit surprised at, at just how open and transparent mm -hmm. RJ. Yeah. I mean, any question that was asked, um, the people got real answers and, and candid answers. Mm -hmm. So my two top takeaways from the round table is number one is something that I'm super excited about. And it's that vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to home, uh, bi-directional charging is is going to be available the vehicles themselves are equipped for it but uh you know there's going to be a separate vehicle to vehicle charger and there is going to be a different home wall box evse if you will mm -hmm. that will support the bi-directional uh vehicle to home so before you go on to point number two can i stop you can we just camp out a little bit on especially vehicle to home because you know we're first talked about this quite a bit with the Ford Lightning. Any kind of predictions on far, as far as the time horizon for this? I, I personally haven't. I found it interesting in the video too, when he was talking about vehicle to vehicle, he said SOP, which I'm assuming is start of production. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then he said, when he was talking about the vehicles at home bi-directional, he said it won't be available at launch. Um, I don't know, I mean, that's the same thing in my mind, but it, it, it felt very deliberate. I honestly, I don't care what the time frame is. To be mm -hmm. completely honest, what yeah. I yeah. was worried about is that the vehicles might not be equipped, and they are. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if it's six months, twelve months. I'm I'm even fine with eighteen, just knowing that the investment that I am making now, it is going to be capable at some point down the road. Yeah, that's right. the best. That's that's a great way to put it because we keep talking about you know launch edition, early adopters. Uh, there's benefits and there's you know drawbacks, and that would be a big drawback if you know mm -hmm. our vehicles weren't capable. Yeah, so that's big. Right. The CEC, um, bless their hearts. Um, the information that they have is only as good as the information they're getting. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, so. When I chatted in a couple of weeks ago and asked the question about vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to go home, the answer that I got was um, it didn't look, I mean, what they had in front of them showed that, or at mm -hmm. least told them that it wasn't coming. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and this was obviously right around the same time that this round table was going on. Because mm -hmm. uh, that was what, three weeks ago now? So I guess it probably yeah. was closer to three weeks when I had the conversation with one of the reps over chat. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, getting that answer that it's coming is huge. Skylar, you had another point too. Take us into that one. I do. And so this one, I, I will openly admit what I thought about this was completely wrong. And the, the second big revelation is that Rivian is going to be producing batteries entirely in-house. Yeah. I mean... RJ even said down to supply chain, mm -hmm. sourcing the, the raw materials. Mm -hmm. And I really would have thought that they would pursue a partnership type arrangement, but um, dead wrong. So that that was a, a huge 
um, bit of news to me. Yeah, it is interesting. The other interesting part about that, Skylar, and just overall battery talk, and um, I don't remember exactly how RJ said it, but you know, essentially that the next uh, iteration of batteries that are already working on, you know, that that would be the next kind of replacement for the ones that we're going to buy, and then even after that, um, like which who knows how many years away that is, but I guess. You know, these guys and gals know pretty much that 10 years from now that they've got a product that they have to start building for now. Uh, don't really want to talk too much about IPO, but I was talking with a buddy about the IPO and he's like, yeah, but what's the what's the upside? Like, where's the big growth potential as far as I'm like, I don't know. I mean, vehicles, sure. And they've talked about smaller cars in different markets. RJ mentioned Europe and Asia and Africa. And then... Um, but I, I kind of told my buddy, I still think one of the biggest things, like question mark, is a gamble, but battery, battery tech and battery production and all that kind of stuff, uh, it's very valuable for them to have if they can get it done. So I'm definitely yeah. for that. And, and in fact, I mean, battery production in the United States in general, I mean, it is a recognized threat to national security mm-hmm. that we are – almost entirely reliant upon foreign battery supplies. So mm-hmm. that's that's a good thing. Yep, for sure. Anything else about uh, battery production in-house, batteries in general, before we go kick it over to any other takeaways from Jimmy? Uh, I mean, and I mentioned, you know, household battery use. I mean, as far as, you know, if Rivian ends up doing some kind of, uh, you know, power wall type, mm-hmm. uh, you know, home use storage. Uh, and I know back in June of 19, um, when they announced that partnership with the Honnold Foundation, yep. you know, they, they had mentioned using a lot of their packs or out of the truck. I mean, it was basically built in order. It was built with the intent that you could basically take the body off, pull the battery, the, the whole pack out and then put it in a container, you know, a, a, you know, put it in a shell, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. and be able to use it for a, a second use uh, mm-hmm. for for battery backup. Yep. Jimmy, besides that then, I mean, Skylar kind of took vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to home, battery as far as um, owning more of the vertical all the way to the metals. Uh, tell me what you're thinking of as far as some top takeaways or favorite parts. Favorite parts, the last sentence in that first paragraph. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I'm happy to report we are on track to begin deliveries in September. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that I could have stopped reading the email at that part at that point. <laughs> yep. You know. Um, but I mean, this feels like this is really going to happen this time. The question will still be like, how many in September? How far is that? How long is this production ramp take? And I mean, I think that right. we were all singing or kind of whistling the tune a month or two ago that this is going to be so slow as for as far as production ramp. But I don't know. After talking with John and Bruce and Tracy um, and kind of hearing some of those numbers about what the line is capable of doing, mm-hmm. you know, one car every four minutes um, and working. 18 hour shifts a day. Um, I, I, I'm, you start doing that math. Like, I don't know, mate, who knows, but, uh, yeah. yeah so, but- so I've actually done a little bit of analysis. As a matter of fact, uh, mm-hmm. I was trading some private messages just with another Rivian enthusiast and we were bouncing ideas back and forth. And, you know, our, our thought is September probably, in the you know below 500 three mm-hmm. to 500 range production um for the month and i don't know whether all of those will be delivered um but then moving closer to the end of the year uh we see it you know probably approaching 2000 vehicles per month mm-hmm. and then, you know over 2000 at, at the beginning of 2022 and literally it could could go up to I, I I feel like the ramp might happen faster than people realize, mm-hmm. uh, but I think that they could easily be at the three or four thousand 
per month level by the middle of next year. Yeah. Cool. And that is that is complete and total just analysis and speculation without right. any practical manufacturing knowledge. Just <laughs> yeah. not not in the automotive space. So just mm-hmm. throwing stuff out there for fun. Yeah, but that is right. fun. That's what we do best is speculate. Speaking of it's really going to happen, I'm going to throw in like a 30-second wrinkle here. Uh, it was like maybe last Thursday or something, and Clay over at Rivian Stories uh, posts this thing about VIN numbers for actual production, like intent to sell vehicles, right? And by the end of the day, it was like at seven. And I love the gift that he put on there, like Michael Scott in the office, <laughs> like saying it's happening, it's happening. Um, so have, have we? Have you guys tracked that? I haven't over the weekend. Are we still sitting at seven or we got a few more? Still sitting at seven. Okay. I literally looked probably 15 minutes before we started chatting just to see if there was <laughs> any difference and there's still at seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything else sticking out to you as far as high points? Uh, my other high point was the app. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a dork when it comes to that stuff. I mean, seven <laughs> or eight, seven or eight years ago, I downloaded the Tesla app just mm-hmm. to, you know, way before I ever thought I could buy one, mm-hmm. um, or ever even considered owning one. I had that app downloaded and I was messing around with it, trying to figure out, you know, what, what, what the Tesla ownership would be like. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know as soon as that uh, it pops up on on the uh, iTunes store or whatever Apple calls their stuff, I don't even. I'm an Apple user. I don't even know what it's called. Um, <laughs> but I mean, as soon as it shows up, I'm I'm downloading it, and oh, I yeah. will absolutely dissect every single screen, every page, mm-hmm. you know. Um, just to yeah. see what it's about. So, I mean, the fact that, and I'm, and I'm hoping, a pure assumption that everybody's going to be able to to download it. Uh, I'm hoping that's the case. I'm hoping it's not closed just for the lucky few who have been contacted so far by their guide. Um, it sounded like it was going to be open, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of, maybe I'm they, just assuming wrong, but yeah. I, I guess I got that impression just from the quick read or the quick listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they did say, you know, supporting both Android and iOS and that it's coming in September uh, prior to the first delivery. So, I mean, literally, that could be basically a week from now or oh, yeah. I think I think at most, you know, at most four weeks from now. So, yeah. it's, uh-huh. it's coming very, very soon. <laughs> yes. we can actually start you, you you guys can start saying it again start Wait, saying no. it <laughs> you you know what that that is soon yes. and if you use it if you use it appropriately it's fine yes right. oh right. that's awesome so um you guys have taken the big ones mm-hmm. but uh, i kept looking at the launch green r1t back there Okay, folks, thanks for watching. Obviously, this one will be continued. We've got a discussion about that launch green color coming up. Uh, In the meantime, please join us over at Rivian Stories. We have a lot more discussion about colors going on right now, so definitely don't want to miss it over there. We'd love to have you. And uh, we also have some more coming to you from Tracy Rivers as well. So lots to come. Please subscribe so don't miss it. Thanks.